肝心のドレミが落ちたんだぞこれが飲まずにいられるかチーズマジュリカ、You really should go easy on the hot sauce. I mean, your sodium levels are gonna go through the roof. Eh? Why would it affect her liver? Cold opener featured a scene from later in this very episode, so let's not spoil it and just move into the episode proper. Aiko and Hazuki were trying to cheer up their friend after her disaster in exam. Yeah, she had such bad luck that she ended up with a maze that looked like this. Honestly, I kind of side with Obu on this one, even if she was being even more two faced than Harvey Dent. Later, Dremi went with one of her classmates to get some worksheets directly from Seki. This kid named Taniyama, on top of having some weird hands, <laughs> seemed to be a rather seclusive boy. However, that quickly changed when he saw their teacher playing a game of shogi or Japanese chess with the vice principal. He gave Seki some advice that probably should have been called out as cheating, but whatever, this is meant to be a character establishing moment. Hey, can't be helped. He has a pretty boy over his shoulder giving him advice. And yeah, I know they played Go, but I also haven't seen March Lion, so it's the best I can do. His pettiness aside, the VP was at least a first Dawn ranked player, so he was certainly not inexperienced. Thus, Aiko believed that he could become the next Sankichi Sakata, a legendary shogi player born during the Meiji period. Yeah, FYI, I also had to do a little research for this video, so you better appreciate it. But yeah, Taniyama insisted that he wasn't interested in shogi, in spite of what his flashbacks of him playing with his father said. Dremi tried to confront him over this, leading into a chase sequence that I think even Wily E. Coyote would say she's doing it wrong. <laughs> Oh, that poor, poor telephone pole. Seriously, I think some crazy chick punched it this morning. <laughs> Regardless, this gave Dorami the chance to question Tanyama about why he didn't want to play. As it turned out, it was mainly because of his parents, in particular his father. Apparently, he tried to become a pro player, but was unable to after he failed to become a fourth Don by the time he turned 30. Now, for those uninformed, the idea of age limits for a board game might sound a little crazy, but it is kind of true, sort of, in this case. This is the Japanese Shogi Association, or JSA. When it was originally established back in 1924, there weren't any age restrictions, until a provision was made in 1968, likely due to a heavy influx of older players. The provision prevented anyone who failed to achieve Fort Dawn status by the time they turned 31 from being certified as a pro. This would later be revised in 1982, lowering that limit down to 26. Now, this episode aired in 1999, so long after that revision, but I guess this episode decided to change it because otherwise Mr. Taniyama would be way too young. Yeah, this flashback was clearly meant to take place right after he failed his last promotion game, so if he were 26 here, and his son was maybe 5 at the time, then that would mean he had his kid when he was 21, which, while certainly not the worst age to have a kid, I also don't think Toy wanted to promote overly young parenthood, even though this story will involve some arguably even heavier topics. That said, I don't know why they didn't just go with the original 31 age restriction if that were the case. Maybe they just thought 30 sounded better. One more though interesting tidbit I want to bring up before we get back into the review was how in 2006 they made yet another major provision with the establishment of the professional admission test, basically a legal backdoor for any third Don ranked players who were over the age limit. This was established thanks to the campaigning of a player named Soji Segawa, whom after winning a ton of amateur shogi tournaments and later some nationals that involved some licensed pros, proved that he was more than qualified to be a pro player himself. So they gave him an ad hoc arrangement where he played against the JSA's handpicked players and won enough to qualify for pro status at the age of 35. He would turn his story into an autobiographical novel, which would later get a film adaptation, both called The Miracle of Crybaby Shotan, which, yeah, that's quite the title. After this, an actual test was created, and as of the time of this video, it has only been successfully implemented by Kenji Imazumi and Shogo Orita, a fellow YouTuber, and oh god, that header. But yeah, I hope all that was informative, and 
might paint an interesting picture for what it's like to be a professional shogi player. Or would you be more interested if it just involved a bunch of lolis? In any case, since Seikawa's reforms were still a few years away, Mr. Taniyama had no way of becoming a pro and thus succumbed to depression and hot sauce drinking. Okay, obviously he was hating the booze, but to be fair, this episode didn't really take the matter all that seriously either, as right after what should have been a really heavy scene of him filling his cup to the brim, we then immediately got a funny little bit of spousal abuse. While the rest of the episode thankfully tackles the subject matter of parents influencing their kids a little better, it is also somewhat muddled by the shot right out of a Tom and Jerry cartoon. More importantly though, this did at least give Dorami some thematic perspective, as she could compare the dad situation with her own, even though again, she probably had the easiest damn test ever, but whatever makes her feel better, girl. She also encouraged the son to follow his dream, since he was clearly talented. This was backed by Seki, who was just kind of passing by on her bike. Does this lady take her rider suit with her to her job? Well, whatever the case, it did lead into a good scene with both parties presenting some valid cases as to whether or not the boy should play shogi. Mr. Taniyama, rather calmly for someone who's clearly been hating the bottle, brought up the very low chances of achieving pro status even with talent. On the other end though, they pointed out how the son wasn't relying just on talent and was constantly improving his skill, and it would be a shame to let that effort go to waste. I really do like it when there's technically not a right or wrong answer for a situation like this, especially when they bring in some real life statistics. Ultimately, the far relented, on the condition that he at least win a local tournament. However, since this show does need at least one over the top antagonist, they got one the next day. Taniyama managed to make it to the finals of a tournament, and while it seemed like he had the game won early on, something was throwing him off and yup, there was an obviously evil voice coming from one of his pieces. And while I think it might have been more interesting and thematically appropriate if it were just his nerves starting to get to him, I guess this is a magical girl show and we haven't seen a bad item in a while. Question was, how would they be able to discreetly take it in the middle of a game? Eh, just use a while though. Then again, I don't think even Dio could stop time for this long, so I think the more appropriate reference is... <laughs> Anyway, they extracted the bad card and the shogi game and did after just one more move. Uh -huh. <laughs> <gasps> Again, I don't watch a lot of shogi anime, so I just use what I know. With that, the episode ended with Taniyama winning his Oden trophy and his dad going full tsundere on him when telling him he'll let him pursue his dreams. He also said he'd quit drinking, which, you know, often isn't something you can just do after you build a dependence on it, but whatever, happy endings all around. This was a pretty good episode with a bit of a played out message. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm in the middle of reviewing Gold Princess Precure, where everything is about fulfilling your dreams in spite of a ton of obstacles, but this just wasn't the most gripping story for me. Part of that might have also been because it did feel a little rushed in areas since they also needed to do a big exposition dump in the middle to explain the workings of the JSA. Though while it also wasn't all accurate, it did at least encourage me to do some research, which is always fun too. Inaccuracies aside, I did find learning about some of the real life struggles of becoming a pro shogi player rather fascinating. It certainly makes for a nice basis for a relatable story about how dreams will come with some very tough and sometimes even impossible obstacles to overcome. And unless someone develops reforms, you might have to give up on them, making it a difficult call on whether or not you should even try to go all in. I do kind of wish some of the Taniyama family's conflict could have been fleshed out just a little more, or at least not portrayed as silly, because last I check, alcoholism and spousal abuse aren't exactly funny topics. I don't know, it just feels like they could have removed Mr. Taniyama's alcoholism from this episode, and it wouldn't have made any real difference, especially when he wasn't acting drunk for the most part. Same can be kind of said for the bad card, which felt a little forced in just to give Taniyama one more obstacle to overcome that was dealt with rather easily off screen for him. Still, extra baggage aside, this was a decent tale about a father and son coming to terms and learning how to pass on the torch. Again, I don't know much about Shogi myself, but at least this episode teaches you how not to drink and play at the same time.
As always, thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll also enjoy all of my future videos. With October underway, I do want to make something to celebrate the last day of this month. I've still got a lot of other stuff to work on, including some side projects, but we'll see how things turn out. Man, until then though, fair for now my friends, and the- hmm? Ooh, looks like they're holding a shogi match nearby here. Wow, never thought Nozomi would be this into Shogi.